import an open source Onyx model into Tau. We'll then use this pre-trained weights to fine tune a model in Tau. So let's start with the computer vision model. We'll go with classification and we'll use a ResNet model. So start by downloading a ResNet 18 model. This model is trained on ImageNet dataset, a corpus of million plus images of thousand different classes. This makes it great for transfer learning. Your model will converge faster, you get higher accuracy, and now you can train and optimize this model with Tau. So let's jump to a Jupyter notebook. Let's install all the required dependencies. Install NVIDIA Tau for training and optimization. Install the NVIDIA's TensorFlow package. This is required for model conversion. And then finally, install the Tau BYOM package. This is a brand new script that we have released to convert and import your model into Tau. Once it's installed, let's make sure everything is installed correctly. And it looks like it, it has. So let's move on to our step number one. Step one is converting a TensorFlow or PyTorch model to Onyx. But since we already have an Onyx model, we'll skip this and move straight to step two. Step two is visualizing the Onyx graph and selecting the activation node. The reason for doing this is the model that we're importing is trained on a different number of classes than the model that we will train. This means that the last few layers will be different in our model. So we only want to import the graph until this last activation layer. So we'll look at the Onyx graph to find out the name of this last activation layer. And Tau will automatically attach a different head that matches our data set during training. So let's fire up the visualizer. Now open up the visualizer in your browser. Scroll all the way down. Select the ReLU activation layer. Copy the name of the layer. You will use it in the next step. Now let's move on to step number three. Here we'll import this Onyx model into Tau. We'll use the Tau BYOM script, specify the Onyx file, specify the name of the model, we specify the output directory, and then finally we specify the penultimate node. This is the act last activation layer that we copied in previous step. Run this. This is fairly quick. Once it completes, it will give you a message if it's successful. And in, in our case, this model was converted successfully. So let's check the output directory to make sure that this model was converted. And it looks like it is. If it is successful, it will generate a .tltb file. So what if the model doesn't convert? What happens then? Well, we have several advanced features that allow you to bring custom layers into Tau. So if you see an error message like uh, so-and-so layers are not supported into Tau, you can add custom layer using the dash C flag in your Tau BYOM. Here you specify the mapping layer, you specify the custom Python code, and then you can import this into Tau. So let's move on to step number four. With our model imported, let's train. For this demo, we'll train on a Pascal Walk data set. Pascal Walk is a 20 class data set with about 15,000 images, representing person class, few animal classes, vehicles, and few other objects. So download and prepare the data set. We have Provide a few scripts to format and split your data. Once you do that, copy your uh, model that you have imported into the local project directory. Next, let's review the training config. This is the default spec file. Here you can specify the name of your model, your training and validation data path. You can specify your optimizer, learning rate. You can also specify your batch sizes, number of epochs. Once you do that, Let's kick off our training job. And depending upon your GPU, this can take half an hour to few hours. While the training is going on, let's monitor the progress. And for this, we'll use the TensorBoard visualization to see our uh, training and validation loss. Let's open up TensorBoard from our terminal and open the UI in our browser. First, let's look at some scalar value. You can look at the accuracy plot. And as you can see, the accuracy is uh, increasing. 
You can also look at the loss and loss is decreasing. That's good to see. Uh, you can also look at uh, validation loss as well. Validation loss can help you see if your uh, model is overfitting. And it looks like our validation loss is kind of trending down. For more advanced user, you can also look at the graph. This can take a few minutes to load. But once it loads, you can click on each of the nodes. You can get the layer information. You can get input and output of each. Also for advanced users, you can plot the histogram of the model weights and biases. Ideally, what you want to see is you want to see histogram centered around zero. If that's not the case, you can play with L1 regularizer and other hyperparameters. Now, let's go back to our training run. It looks like the run has completed. Let's look at the overall accuracy on our test data set. And this can take a few minutes. So it looks like our accuracy is OK. We have a lot of room to improve. We have uh, accuracy is good on some classes, not so good on other classes. Let's see how this model does influence on few sample images. Well, it did reasonably well on all the images. The fourth one is a person and a dog in the image, so it predicted as a person. Well, there's room to improve uh, this model. But this is the end of this demo, but you can continue with model pruning and optimization, as well as improving the accuracy.